Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well. In this video, I want to show you a very fast way in which we can set up endpoints so we can begin receiving webhook information. Depending on the information we get to our endpoint, we'll do different actions and I'll show you how we can customize it all. Let's get started. So within our Wayscript account here, we're inside of a workspace. With workspaces, we can create many different environments called layers by clicking the new layer button to the top right. Once you've named your layer, just click on create. And if you want to just use the one that I'm creating in this video, the link to clone it will be in the description of this video. To get started, what we first need to do is to consider that we need an endpoint that our webhook will go to. So to get a very simple endpoint, we can click on the dot triggers file that is already present within our file manager within our environment. We'll click on new trigger and we will click on HTTP. What this will do is give us an endpoint that we can use to begin working with our code. You see that we get a command to run and this will just be the execution of a Python script or a different programming language script that we can put in here. What we'll do now is we will click test and this will set up that endpoint where we can go to it. So in just a few seconds, we've already set up an endpoint that we can begin working with. You see that we don't get a response here because we're not returning a response with our command, but in our process log, we can go and view and see we get our command back here. So now let's do something a little bit more. What we can do is we will create a new file of the programming language of your choice. Mine is Python, and I will just call this webhook example.py. So what I need to do within this Python script is to extract the body of a payload that is sent to my endpoint. And we can do that with a Wayscript specific library called Wayscript, easy enough. So we will, I will copy in that dependency. And you also see here that we have a HTTP trigger endpoint, and I'll show you how to use that. We also have a JSON import, and we will just use this to convert the payload that we received to JSON so we can work with it more easily. To start off, our request payload will just be that import of context. And there is a method within context called get event. And what this does is returns us information about the event that is happening in our program. I have a few lines of just generic code here. And what we're setting up here is just a response to give back to a webhook or a user that hits our endpoint. And now what we can do is using our context, we can do specific actions depending on the body of the request sent to our endpoint. So the information that is sent to us, we will call something like request body. We will use json.loads. We'll use that request payload and we will pull out a dictionary within it and another one, both by the same name of data. There's a full example of the dictionary that I'm working with in this line here, but all it is is we have a dictionary with the key of data inside another dictionary of a key of data, all within our request payload information that we're getting from our get event method here. So at this point, depending on the webhook that is hitting our service, we might want to do different actions and we can do those with an if statement. So something like if request body dot get, and then whatever key that we're expecting from our service or our user, we'll just use some key for this example, equals maybe something like some value. Then we could do an action here where we could query a database, send a message on Slack or a lot more. But for this example, I will just keep it very simple and we will just change the response that we give back to the user. So what we'll do is we will take this line and we will paste it here. And instead of this, we will say response action performed. And with just a few lines, we've already set up a system that will do different actions depending on the information that is sent to it. Finally, we need to send this response back to the user whenever they hit our endpoint. And we can do that using this import by sending that response via the trigger with our information. Awesome. So we have this set up now. Our final step will be if we want this to be an internal tool to our organization or an external tool. 
So with an internal tool, what we can do is we can set it so only people within our workspace can access this script. For this example, since I want to share this with everyone and allow you to hit this endpoint as well, what we can do is we can go to our endpoints to the left and make endpoints publicly accessible. This means that even when you're not logged in to this WayScript workspace, you can still hit it. But if you wanted this to have another layer of security, WayScript already has a built-in user management system that we can use. Now that I have all of this set up, we need to go back to our dot triggers file and we will edit this. So instead of our command to run, so now we need to change our command to run. We will say Python to execute a Python script and example.py. Perfect. So now we can click on the test button, save all, and this will create this endpoint for us. You see in the URL that we have this slash dash dev. And what that's saying is this is our dev endpoint. We can also create a prod endpoint. So if we wanted to make changes in dev and push to prod, we have that option with the deploy over here to the left. Both of these URLs will be linked down below so you can hit them using your own Python script. So now that we have all of this set up, I will hit our endpoint. So I have a little bit of code here that will be linked down below as well. And we should get a response back since I'm passing some key to some value. Our response is that if statements response of action performed. So we're just returning text depending on that body, but we could be doing a lot more like how I was saying and performing an actual action. So if you have any questions about anything in this video, please let us know and we'll be happy to help you out. Until next time.